Video games often mirror real life, but what about when they say something that just ends up turning out to be real? Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, eight unusual things predicted by video games. At number eight, Assassin's Creed Origins predicted a secret chamber in the Giza Pyramid. In Assassin's Creed Origins, you play as a proto-assassin in ancient Egypt during the time of Cleopatra and Julius Caesar. In the game, it's possible to explore the Great Pyramid of Giza, and the developers tried to make it as accurate as possible regarding how the interior looks, including the size of the chambers and other stuff like that. They also included another secret chamber that at the time of the game's release had yet to be discovered. According to an article in Forbes, the developers at Ubisoft were aware of some theories proposed by Jean-Pierre Houghton that the Great Pyramid had more chambers that had not yet been discovered. So they included the unknown rooms into the game with the expectation they would eventually be discovered, and they were correct about that. Assassin's Creed Origins was released on October 27th, 2017, whereas the announcement the scientists discovered a previously unknown chamber in the pyramid happened in, at least according to this Guardian article, only a few days later, November 2nd, 2017. So they managed to beat science by less than a week. Apparently scientists discovered the chamber by using sensors that detect muons, which I, I don't know what that is. And that allowed them to see a void in the area above the Grand Gallery. The science of all this is actually really interesting, but all told what happened in Assassin's Creed Origins is that Ubisoft called it shot and scientists confirmed it only a few days after release. As of this writing, we still don't know exactly what is in that undiscovered chamber, but because of the historical significance of the pyramid, explorers can't just go and start tearing down the walls or something to check it. So progress on actually uncovering the place is a little slow. Still, it's unlikely that what Ubisoft put in there is actually what the space is going to look like. I really doubt there's like a Scrooge McDuck treasure hoard hiding behind the secret chamber, but they were right about the size and location of it at least. At number seven, Madden 15 predicted Super Bowl 49 down to the score. This is a crazy one. Also from a Forbes article, um, people like running Madden simulations to predict the outcome of Super Bowl games. And it's actually pretty good at calling the winner, but it's rarely this accurate. For Super Bowl 49, the simulation didn't just accurately guess that the New England Patriots would walk away with the victory. It also correctly predicted the ultimate score, 28 to 24. That's not the only thing the simulation got right either. It also predicted Tom Brady as the MVP in the game and it was really damn close to guessing his final yards and amount of touchdowns, which is pretty wild. I mean, Tom Brady, it's, it's not insane, the idea that he would be the MVP of the game, but still, the simulation predicted he'd get 335 passing yards and four touchdowns. In reality, it was 328 and four touchdowns, so it was really only a few yards off. And other than that, it was right on the money. Of course, there was a lot about the game that the simulation didn't predict, but the fact that it was able to get that close for so many details is extremely impressive. At number six, Mirror's Edge predicted the London Shard. Right, this one's pretty wild. Anyone who's been to London in the last 10 years is probably aware of the Shard, the 72-story skyscraper at the heart of the city. It began construction in 2009 and finished in 2012, according to Wikipedia, and it's the tallest building in the United Kingdom, at least at the time of this writing. Oddly enough, Mirror's Edge, the parkour action game in 2008, also contains a building called the Shard. This is one year before the construction began on the real Shard. They do not look exactly the same, sure, but the resemblance is pretty striking. I guess if you're gonna call a building the Shard, there's only so many ways it can really come out. And yes, Mirror's Edge obviously doesn't take place in London rather than an unnamed place called The City. But honestly, it only makes it more likely that the developers at DICE were unaware of the London Shard when they created it. Like, would a game insert a different Empire State Building into their unnamed city just because? <laughs> I doubt it. They wouldn't want to be associated with a real place, so they'd make it something new. From our research, it seems like the Mirror's Edge Shard and the London Shard are basically a total coincidence, but the similarities are really interesting, as well as how close Mirror's Edge came out to the real-life construction of the real-life Shard. At number five, Metal Gear Solid 2 predicted the Echelon system. Now, there's always tons of talk about Metal Gear Solid 2 predicting social media, fake news, and everything in between, and it's an easy case to make because the ending on that game touches on so many things. You can ascribe almost anything to it. Although, although whatever you want to ascribe to it, it's probably true. 
frankly, the game is quite prescient. I mean, Hideo Kojima is basically single-handedly responsible for the word meme existing in the popular lexicon. But out of all the stuff that Metal Gear Solid 2 could have predicted, the existence of the Echelon system is the easiest to prove. If you're unaware, Echelon is basically the massive surveillance program employed by the NSA to collect and analyze communication. Though it was long suspected, the actual existence of this network was not confirmed until 2015 as part of the Edward Snowden leaks and whistleblower incident. In comparison, Metal Gear Solid 2 introduced the world to what is basically the Echelon system all the way back in 2001. So how did Metal Gear predict the existence of the thing? Well, the AI GW and the Arsenal Gear project from the game basically function like the real life Echelon system. It uses AI to filter through mass communication on a global scale. And of course, the ultimate goal of the system in Metal Gear is to control the flow of information and influence people to do what the government and the secret group that controls the government called the Patriots wants. Echelon, in comparison, isn't officially as sinister or provably as sinister. Like, as far as we know, it's not as sinister. We do know that the NSA and Echelon are capable of intercepting telephone calls, fax, emails, satellite transmissions, and public telephone networks, at very least, and that they use algorithms similar to the ones used by companies like Facebook, which sift through massive amounts of data they collect. In such a paranoid and conspiracy-minded series like Metal Gear, pretty much any use of technology is considered sinister, and there is always some dark ulterior motive behind everything. That, I mean, it could be true in this case, but we really don't have any way of knowing. The whole project is one that remains shrouded in secrecy to this day, so we probably won't know for a very long time, if ever. At number four, Sonic Mania predicted the drop dash. Now, in comparison to secret vaults and entire solar systems, the discovery of the drop dash in an old Sonic 3 beta seems pretty minor, but if you're a fan of the Sonic series, that's pretty big news, actually. So let me break this down. Sonic Mania came out in 2017 as an intentional throwback to the original Sega Genesis games in the series. It also introduced a new feature called the Drop Dash, which basically allowed you to immediately transition to Sonic's ball form if you activated it while jumping. It's basically the spin dash, except for you didn't have to rev up. It's not a huge thing, but it makes it so you don't have to spend quite as much time stopping in order to rev up a big speed boost. It seemed like Sonic Mania was actually the first game to include this feature, but back in 2019, people discovered a prototype version of Sonic 3, which actually contained a move very similar to the drop dash. So basically, the developers of Sonic Mania, who, remember, aren't in any way affiliated with the original Sonic game creators, they're just a, a bunch of talented fans who cut their teeth on fan games and ROM hacks, and Sega hired them to make the game. So basically, they predicted something that already kind of happened. The Sonic 3 beta dates back to 1993, but it went undiscovered and unseen for decades before it was dug up. So the Sonic Mania developers added a feature to the series that the original creators were possibly planning on adding, but just never did for whatever reason. Maybe there was some kind of technical issue, or maybe the move was a little too player friendly for 1993, who really knows. We searched the internet to see if the Mania developers knew about this move, but that doesn't seem to be the case. The whole thing is just a weird coincidence as far as we can tell, but either way, they called it. At number three, Pokemon Gold and Silver predicted the discovery of volcanic slugs. I mean, it figures that with all the Pokemon Game Freak keeps creating, eventually they'll come up with a creature that actually exists that hasn't been discovered yet. But specifically, the monster in question is Mag Cargo, a Pokemon that's slug-like, made of lava, and was first introduced in Pokemon Gold and Silver. The idea of a snail or slug made of lava is pure fantasy, but they're more similar to a real-world creature than you might think. Pokemon Gold and Silver were released in 1999, but this critter known as the Scaly Foot Gastropod was first discovered in April of 2001, almost two years later. Like, this thing is weird as hell. It's a deep sea creature that spends its life around the hydrothermal vents in the Andean Ocean, withstanding incredible heat to do so. Like the Mag Cargo, they also have a rock-like shell, which literally incorporates iron sulfides into it, and even has iron sulfides incorporated into its skeleton. It's actually the only known animal to have anything like that, so it's pretty unique. So, yeah, the Mag Cargo and the Scaly Foot Gastropod are not one-to-one -one or anything, but the fact that there's a snail that lives in a super hot environment and has a shell made of partially, literally from rock, makes these two creatures really similar. And we just need to keep an eye out for any suspicious electrically charged rats, because apparently the Pokemon company knows something we do not. 
At number two, Earthbound predicted that it is possible to unboil eggs. Now, this is a really goofy one, but it's something I can't help but remember. An Earthbound, if you remember, is a fairly quirky Super Nintendo RPG, came out in 1995. It's about a kid going from town to town on a grand adventure in Eagle Land or some sort of alternate version United States, basically. Uh, they actually predicted something that perfectly fits in with the game's idiosyncratic style. When you get to Tucson, the second town of the game, you meet two different inventors, the Orange Kid and the Apple Kid. Both want you to invest in their inventions, and it's ultimately the Apple Kid you actually want to put your heart and money towards, as he actually creates something useful for you. The Orange Kid, on the other hand, well, he just makes junk. He seems like the right choice at first, but it is a trap. He just makes you a useless invention, and it is not helpful. One of his inventions is, and this is pretty obviously supposed to be a joke, a machine that will turn boiled eggs back to raw eggs. The idea of it sounds ludicrously impractical and pointless, you know, on top of being impossible. But actually, no, back in 2015, some chemists found a way to actually do that. Like, look, here's a fizz.org article about it. Supposedly, they can unboil eggs. Like, it also, gotta say, sounds pretty pointless at first. But from reading the article, it actually has a lot of practical applications. It all boils down. Get it? Haha. <laughs> boils down, sorry, to being able to produce and recycle molecular proteins. Being able to make a boiled egg a raw egg, again, is just the tip of the iceberg. So yeah, it was just an offhand joke, but for whatever reason, it always stuck with me. And when I saw that they'd actually managed to do it, I had to give props to Earthbound for calling it. Sure, it's probably just a total shot in the dark, probably a joke. No one ever expected it to actually be real, but it doesn't matter. The game said it, so they predicted it, right? Right? And finally, number one, Elite Dangerous predicted the discovery of the Trappist-1 system. Back in 2017, as reported by Vox, NASA discovered nine planets that are considered to be Earth-like, as in, they're potentially water-rich and could conceivably be inhabitable by humans in the future. What's also interesting about these planets and this solar system is that they're only 40 light years away, relatively close to when it comes to space. That's pretty interesting, but interestingly enough, the space game Elite Dangerous actually sort of found the system first. According to this article published by Polygon, the developers, using their universe creation algorithm, ended up creating a system that's very similar to the one that was discovered, called the Trappist-1 system. And it appeared in a similar location in space as well. And they did it before the real-life system was even discovered. Interestingly enough, the developers only noticed it when they were attempting to add the actual Trappist-1 system to the game before realizing their code had already created an eerily similar system called the Core System Sector XU-PA5-0 which obviously doesn't have the same kind of ring to it. It's not just a series of planets in the same location either. Like the actual Trappist-1 system, the one generated in Elite Dangerous, has a dwarf star at the center. And also, just like the real system, it's orbited by seven terrestrial planets. Maybe it's a wild coincidence, or maybe the planet-generating algorithm is actually just pretty damn good. Either way, this is the one video game that found it first. That's all for today. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription. So click subscribe. Don't forget to enable all notifications. And as always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at Falcon the Hero. And we'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks.